Life as a man is exceptionally difficult. I say the most beautiful and the most terrifying thing about being a man is you're born without value. Society doesn't care about you. You're only going to be cared about based on how useful you are. You have the chance to build yourself up and become a superhero if you're prepared to do the hard work and be indefatigable enough to never quit. But if you're going to stand around and wait for a handout, nobody's going to ever respect you. I think that a lot of people have forgotten about how difficult and how competitive it is as a man. We're always in constant competition with each other. And it's your duty as a man to stand up and say, I want to be as important and strong and good-hearted and God-fearing as possible. And I need to work hard to achieve those things. And the dangerous thing about overly emotional men is that they're dangerous. They're genuinely dangerous. This is what's crazy. All these people who talk about toxic masculinity and how bad it is for men to be traditionally masculine. A traditionally masculine man does things he doesn't feel like doing because it is his duty to do that. He charges into the burning building because it is his duty. Not because he feels like it, because it is his duty. We're now teaching the new generation of men that they don't have duty and they can just act on their feelings and act how they feel and they don't have to act as a man should. Do you know what happens when you get men who just act how they feel? You get school shooters, you get violence. Men who do not control their emotions are dangerous. If you find a man who is stoic, he's not going to hurt people. He's going to sit and think about his actions very carefully, and he's going to be a good man who protects for and provides for his family. If you find a man who just acts out on impulse and does whatever he feels like, you're going to find a dangerous man. Sitting here telling men to cry more and act with their feelings, and it's okay to feel this way, that way, etc., and have no self-control. That is why we have the problems we have in the world. Absolutely not really wrong. So when they talk about toxic masculinity, they have it completely inverse on its head. Completely not really wrong. We need to be teaching stoicism. We need to be teaching young men to understand that the world is very, very difficult. It's hard to be a man. You're going to feel bad sometimes. You just suck it up and perform anyway. Not to sit there and cry your eyes out or blame other people. And when bad things happen, they call traditionally masculine men. If you need a firefighter, you need a masculine man. When you call the police because of the problem you had, you want masculine men. And as soon as a woman or a man is in trouble, when you look for backup, you look for masculine men. And masculine men have a duty to provide and protect those they care about. We have a duty to do things we don't feel like doing because we know we're supposed to do them. And that's why we stayed in the Titanic and died. The real problem with the world is that there is an epidemic of cowardice. Men, men are cowards. We have an epidemic of cowardice. Everybody is so afraid. It's on the other side of fear that you're going to garner the respect of other individuals. You have to do things that they're afraid to do, meaning most likely you are also afraid. I've done a bunch of shit. I was afraid 87 times before I got in the ring and cage. It's scary, right? I lived a scary life. But by going through all of that, I am now respected. You have to learn to face your fear. I'm not saying be, I'm not saying not be afraid because that's not brave. If you do something, and you're not afraid, you're not brave. You have to be afraid and do it anyway. That's what courage is. So I'm not saying you can be as scared as you want, but you still have to go. We're living inside of a video game. Because in a video game, you're going to go through trial and tribulation. You're going to struggle to upgrade your character. And the reason you upgrade your character is when you get more stats, you can complete more difficult levels within the game. Life is exactly the same. The levels never end, but as you become better, you stand a better chance of completing them. So as you upgrade your character, you get further and further in the game, but the game never ends. That's the beauty of being a man. All these men are out here complaining, complaining that things are difficult. The reason it has value is because it's difficult. If it was easy, everyone would have it and it wouldn't have any value. Complain that it's hard to get a Lambo. The reason having a Lambo is cool is because nobody has a Lambo. How are you going to complain that it's hard to be the man, but then also understand that being the man has value? They are linked. You cannot separate the two. It's a logic fail. If you love the fact if you love the idea of being that character you dream of yourself to be, then you should love the fact it's hard to become that man. Because it means no one else can do it. There's no light without dark. You will not appreciate your six pack unless you didn't have one and you had to earn it. That's how the world works. So when I talk to these dudes like, oh, but it's, you know what, Tate? Yeah, I agree, but you know, it's hard. It's hard. Of course it is. It's supposed to be. And if you're not cut out for it, then f off and live a normal existence and die. Sit there. Letting other men enjoy the spoils of being a man and die. If that's what you want to do is just sit there and exist and then be fade into history unremembered. That's your decision. If you want to level up your character, then you need to get out here and do it. You need to be around brave men. You need to get some balls. You need to get your network together. You need to do the truth. Humble yourself. Stop sitting there with an ego. Realize you ain't for nothing but lucky. Bacteria could have stole your eyesight at the age of three and it didn't. You could have been in a car crash and lost both your parents. Never happened. You've been nothing but lucky. Blind luck has given you a favorable hand and you've managed to f it up. And they are trying to convince you that you should act how you feel. You should show more of your feelings. If you feel this way, you should show it. If you want to cry, cry. Look, I have no problem with guys crying. Sometimes guys cry, right? My dad died, I cried. 
I've, I've cried once in 10 years, but it's not a default emotion for me. Sometimes you cry, right? But what I'm saying is the reason they're trying to bring out emotionality in you is because most of the time you don't feel like doing the things you're supposed to do. But the true masculine frame throughout history was doing the things they didn't want to do, but they knew they had to do because they had honor and duty. That's what honor and duty means. Do you think the men on the Titanic wanted to stay on the Titanic? No, we're men. We have to stay. We're scared, but we must. It's our duty to let the women and children on the lifeboats. This is masculine duty. When you remove self-control from men, you get, not only do you get emasculated weak men, what you also get is very dangerous men. Because the world at large is trying to tell you, just be more in touch with your feelings and everything's going to be fine. Men also have an innate desire, one, for conquest, and two, we have a biological response. We are very predispositioned to anger. You look at all these school shooters and sh these are men who can't control their emotions. That's yeah. all they are. Facts. They have no self-control. And then they go and do dangerous sh A good man controls himself. I have absolute self-control. If I decide to smash your face in, it was a very conscious decision. Nothing to do with the fact I was angry. You understand? Emotional control is absolutely and utterly important as a man. Now, I'm not saying become a stoic dork, have no personality, be a boring. I'm not saying that. I'm saying that you need to understand as a man, there are certain principles under which you act regardless of how you feel. Bam. I can wake up in a terrible mood. I can wake up sad. I can ache. I can have a, a busy day, stressed, etc. I will complete the same tasks as if I woke up in a fantastic mood. I'll do the same things because how I feel has no bearing on the things I'm going to do in my day because I have duty to myself and to my bloodline. So a lot of you guys out here are acting like fools because you feel like acting like fools. And what I'm going to say to you is because you think there's something wrong with you. You go, well, I don't, I lack motivation. You hear this one? I don't have the motivation to go to the gym. Well, here's the news flash. Neither did I. And I still did it. So now what are you going to say? Now you have no excuse, right? Mm. Oh, you're scared to get in the ring. So was I. I still did it. I'm scared to get the cage. So was I. I still did it. Being a man is about not feeling things. It's about acting the way you're supposed to act regardless of how you feel. And I'm tired of hearing guys mess you about how they feel. I don't feel motivated. I don't feel. Feel, 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 feel. Leave the feelings to the girls, right? That's what they do. We act. We're men of action. We get things done. That's how the world got built. All of it. All the men who built the skyscrapers felt scared. They did it anyway. You need to become a man of action. Stop worrying about how you feel and start worrying about what you're supposed to be doing. You have a series of emotions you live with regularly, don't you? Those emotions could be bliss, passion, joy, faith. But they could also be worry, stress, depression, frustration, concern. And because you've done it over and over again, even though you know they don't serve you, you will find a way on a very regular basis to get those damn emotions. The quality of your emotions is going to be the quality of your life. The Bible says in 1 Corinthians, we are unspiritual when we're under the control of ordinary impulses. And that's the way so many people are today. They just let their feelings run their lives. If they feel like telling somebody off, they just tell them off. They feel like being depressed, then they go around all depressed. But friends, we cannot just act on these emotional impulses and expect to have any kind of victory in our lives. Feelings can get us into trouble. And throughout life, you're going to have plenty of opportunities to lose your temper. You're going to get up some mornings and feel like being depressed. At times you'll get caught in traffic and feel like being impatient, feel like getting upset. But we've got to learn how to follow wisdom and do what we know is right and not just follow our feelings around. I can feel my emotions rising, but I made a decision not to get on board. Just because you can feel those emotions doesn't mean you have to get on board. When you feel like saying something that you know you shouldn't say, no, don't get on board. If things aren't going your way and you kind of feel like being discouraged, no, you've got to learn to discipline the negative feelings and keep a good attitude anyway. It's when we do the hard things in life, that's when God is developing our character. Somebody offends us and we just don't let it bother us, we just take the high road, that's when we're really maturing. But the problem today is too many people 
are not willing to pay the price to walk in victory. They don't want to be inconvenienced. They just want to take the easy way out. The easiest thing to do is to just let our flesh have its way. If you want to grow up and experience God's best, it's going to take some hard work. It's hard to keep a good attitude and be patient when nothing's going your way. Sometimes it's going to make us uncomfortable. But I read where there are two kinds of pain in life. One is the pain of discipline. The other is the pain of regret. And if we live a lazy, undisciplined life, and we act on these emotional impulses, we're going to make very poor choices that we regret later on. I mean, how many times have we acted on our emotions and said something that we know we shouldn't say, and later on, it ends up hurting us in that relationship? 